Howdy, neighbor. Welcome to the Good News Program. I'm your host, Mike Vaughn, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. No matter what kind of things and situations you've been going through, I want you just to hang on for a few more minutes because I know that things are going to turn around for you. Don't give up. Keep trusting in the Lord because sometimes when folks give up, then their, their miracle, their help, it just comes through right around the corner. So I want to encourage you. That's what this program is all about, to encourage you to continue uh, serving the Lord, to continue in life, and don't give up. I want to continue on our subject, talking about giving thanks, talking about living a lifestyle of thankfulness. I love what Psalm 104 says, to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And the word thanks and thanksgiving is just all over the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament. And it's a part of worship toward God. And it's also to be a lifestyle for us daily. And so I do hope that you are living a lifestyle of thanksgiving. If not, today is a good day to start because it will bless your life. I want to encourage you to get on the phone right now, call a friend and neighbor, and let them know the Good News Program is on so they can be blessed, so they can be encouraged. I want to share a song before I get into my message today. And this is one of my favorite songs talking about being thankful. And it says that God is good. So just worship the Lord as I share this song. And I'll be back in a few moments to pray with you. Stay tuned now. is 
great. God is great. God is good. God is great. God is great. God is good. How many believes it tonight? Now, it's easy to focus on what you don't have instead of what you do have. Someone said, I was content until I started looking through that Sears catalog. But be thankful for what you do have. Or I was content with my vehicle until I saw the new one that my neighbor got. And then I thought, look at the old raggedy thing I got. Yeah, but before you saw his, you was content, wasn't you? You was happy. Or I was content with the clothes I wear until I took a walk through the mall. And I saw a lot of different ones, new ones. Or I was satisfied with the home I live in until I saw a program on the Travel Channel with all them big, nice homes. And then I wasn't content anymore. I am satisfied with every area of my life until I start comparing with someone else's life. Don't compare your life with someone else's. I feel like I have enough of everything until I see someone who has more. We've got to quit looking at what everyone else has and start looking at the blessings all around us that God has given us and be thankful for what he has given us. Can you say amen? You've heard the old saying that says, you don't know what you got till it's gone. When your electricity was shut off, you became thankful for it, didn't you? <laughs> Think about it. When the garbage was not picked up, you became real thankful for that garbage collector because it just piled up more and more and more. And I'll tell you what, last time we had that hurricane, it really made me thankful of the hot water because I had to take some cold showers. And whoo, I, said, I had to say, help me, Jesus. <laughs> My I needed some extra grace, brother, to take that cold shower. I didn't remember that water being that cold. Woo! Thankful for hot water. But see, a lot of times we find ourselves not thankful until we lose something. Like a good friend dies and suddenly we discover how much they really meant to us. Do you take the things God has blessed you with for granted? Let's not do that. Are you like the little boy who was given an orange by a man? The boy's mother asked, what do you say to the nice man? Well, the little boy thought and handed the orange back, and he said, peel it. <laughs> Some of you get that later. <laughs> Sometimes we get so focused on what we want, we don't think about giving thanks. And sometimes we think so hard about what we want from God, we forget to ask God what he wants from us. Lord, what would you have from me? What do you want from me? There was a young man who was getting ready to graduate from college, and he was sure that his wealthy father was going to buy him a car for graduation because they had gone out and looked at cars together and come the night of the graduation, the father calls his son into his study and he tells his son how proud he was of him and hands him a nicely wrapped gift. Now listen carefully. The boy unwraps it to find a Bible. And he asked his father, why in the world did you give me a Bible, Dad? And the father said, well, it was your graduation present. And the young man became so furious, he said, with all of your money and all you could buy me was just an old Bible? So he threw the Bible back on his father's desk and he stomped out of the house 
and he never come back. But years and years passed, and this young man became a very successful business person. And one day he received word that his father had passed away and he needed to come home. He caught the first plane out, and when he got home, he realized just how long it had been since he had seen his father. And as he began to look around, he went into his father's study, and you know what he found? He found that Bible. It was still half-wrapped, sitting on the desk where he had thrown it. He picked it up, and he started thumbing through it. When all of a sudden, a key dropped from the back of the Bible. He picked it up, and he saw a card still in the Bible, and he opened the card and read what his father had written in it. And it said, Congratulations on your graduation, son. Here is a Bible and the key to your new car you picked out. The car is to get you to where you are going, and the Bible is to keep you on the right road while you are traveling there. Oh, love dad. And the card was a receipt for the car, and it said paid in full. How many times have we not received blessings from our Heavenly Father because they weren't wrapped like we thought they should have been? Think about it. How many times have we been so focused on what we want that we didn't realize the blessing God wanted us to have? Thankfulness. Paul teaches us to be thankful. He teaches us even that prayer is not complete without thankfulness. For in Colossians 4, 2, he tells us to continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. There was a visiting farmer who stopped at a city restaurant to eat lunch. And when he was served his food, he bowed his head and he gave thanks to the Lord. Some crude guys sitting at a nearby table noticed the farmer's prayer and they shouted, Hey, Pops, back where you come from, says, does everybody pray like that? Well, their laughter was silenced when he said, unmoved. He said, yeah, everybody but the pigs. (laughs) Thankfulness. When you approach God in prayer, always remember Begin with thanksgiving, not petition. Just be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what he's already done for you. Amen. Be thankful for what he's done uh, in the world. Like I said, his creation. Uh, he, He made us a nice place to live on this earth. We don't know of any other place like this that has water and air and everything so nice like we have. He made this for us to live. And we should be thankful from that right on down to the little things that happens in our everyday lives. Can you say amen? Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. So why is giving thanks so important? First of all, it honors God. It honors him. Psalm 50, 23 says, He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. Do you want to honor God? Give him thanks. And number two, it pleases God. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord. More than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and its hoofs. It will please the Lord. Do you want to please the Lord? Give him thanks. Psalm 107, 22. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, next week, I'm going to 
be talking more about praise, more about the meaning of praise. But in summary today, let us enter in to his gates with what? With thanksgiving. Let us make thanksgiving a part of our corporate worship. When we come together to worship, let us begin by giving him thanks. And let us offer thanks always first. And then let us live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. When, whenever someone does something for you, thank them. Say thank you. Be a person of gratitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. And then give God thanks all through the day from when you get up in the morning till you go to bed at night. Be thankful unto him, a lifestyle of thanksgiving. If we do this, there will be no room for complaining. I mean, you can't give thanks and complain at the same time, can you? You got to do one or the other, amen? So if we give thanks, we can't complain. We can't gripe. We can't live on Grumble Alley but we'll live on Thanksgiving Street. Amen. Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you're enjoying that teaching, talking about being thankful, living a lifestyle of thanksgiving. First of all, it's part of our worship towards the Lord, but also it should be a lifestyle. We should have an attitude of gratitude. And if we do that, I tell you what, life is a whole lot better. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. If we'll just simply live a lifestyle of giving thanks unto the Lord. Now, if you would like to uh, have this whole teaching in its entirety, all you have to do is call us and tell us that you would like this full teaching. It's entitled, uh, Give Thanks. So call us today if you're interested in that at 888-429-2280. And because I know a lot of times you maybe miss a program or you, you miss some of the scriptures and you want to get it. And uh, our programs are always available to you. So call us today and uh, for your gift of any amount to the ministry. We won't charge you anything for it. But if you can give a, a gift to help us stay on the air in your area, that would be very appreciated. Call us at 888-429-2280. And we have so many things we can be thankful for, not just during the Thanksgiving season, but every day all year long. And one of the greatest things we can be thankful for is Jesus Christ and the fact that he died for our sin. And so that we can have eternal life. That's right. He gave us a full pardon of our sin debt. And he set us free by his precious blood. And if you've never prayed to receive him as Savior and Lord and receive that gift of eternal life, you can do, do so right now. Just say this simple prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I turn from my sin and I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He is the Son of God, and He died on that cross for my sin, that I might have eternal life. I receive you, Jesus, into my heart, into my life. Thank you for saving me now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friend, the Bible says if you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart that you are now a born-again child of God. The Spirit of God has come to live on the inside of you, and you will never be the same again. And you can shout the victory because you know that you're saved. You know that you're delivered from sin, and you're delivered from separation from God. You will live forever now with Jesus. What a wonderful thing to know that your future is secure. And I want to send you this little book to help you grow in the Lord entitled, Now What? This here tells you about the things you need to do to begin to grow. Read your Bible and go to a Bible-believing church. And uh, it has a, a lot of the specific scriptures that a new believer needs to read, as I said, to begin growing in the Lord. So call today. No cost or obligation for this. But if you prayed to receive Jesus, call me at 888 429 
888-429-2280. That's a toll-free call at 888-429-2280. If I'm not in the office when you call, leave your name and number and just say, I prayed with Brother Mike to receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord, and I want to get that little book entitled, Now What? We'll be glad to send that to you. And also, I want to tell you about our Christmas special, CD special, two CDs for your gift of only $20 to the ministry. And this is Simple Things and our Christmas CD. And a lot of folks love to listen to that good Christmas music. And we do have the, a country Christmas CD. And but we're offering both of these for a limited time for your gift of $20. And I pay the postage. So call us today at 888-429-2280. Once again, that's 888-429-2280. And I want to share with you some concerts coming up November the 14th. I'll be a guest at the 62nd Annual Thanksgiving Singing at First Baptist Church of Pearl, Mississippi. And that's located at 405 North Beardman Road in Pearl, Mississippi. And we get started at 6.30 p.m. Now, there'll be many groups there. Tim Frith and the Gospel Echoes, who's hosting the event as well as the Singing Echoes, the Chuck Wagon Gang, the Revelations, Jason Runnels, and myself, of course, will be there. Now, this is a ticketed event, so for more information, call Tim Frith at 601-906-0677. Once again, that's 601-906-0677. And then make plans to visit us right here in Tickfall, Louisiana, for our annual Christmas concert coming up deep December the 4th. And I'll be singing my good friend Glenn Fendelson. And our special guest is Danny Bishop of South Carolina. And he was with us last year, and we just had a blessed time in the Lord. And uh, he is a wonderful singer as well as a fluent uh, guitar player. So don't miss our special Christmas concert. Again, December the 4th at 6.30 p.m. For more information on all of these concerts, Go on our website at mvmgoodnews.com or you can call us, of course, if you have any questions. But while you're on the Internet, don't forget to check out our YouTube page. Subscribe to our YouTube page and you can watch the Good News programs on there anytime that you want to. And also check us out on Facebook. You want to know the different things that's going on around here, then check us out on Facebook. We're always posting different things on there. And uh, that's mvmgoodnews.com if you want to visit our website. And then we have all that other information on there. And also consider helping us proclaim the good news of the Lord Jesus to the nations of the world. If you want to uh, be a blessing to other people in the nations, then that's how you do it. Become a good news partner by giving financially to this ministry and by praying for us. And if you want more information about that, all you have to do is call or write, and we can send you a free brochure. Also on our website, we have partnership information on our website as well. If you'd like to call us today, call us at 888-429-2280. And I want to say a special thanks to my partners that have been so faithful to us. Thank you, partners, for praying for us and for giving financially as you have been. And I want you to know that we pray for you each and every day for God's continued blessings in your life. And I want to say a special prayer for you, Heavenly Father. I ask you to bless our partners today, Lord, and also everyone else watching and listening to this program. Heal the sick, Lord, and strengthen the weak by your mighty anointing, Lord. Set the captives free, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll be out of time, but I want you to know thank you for tuning in. We love you and appreciate you, and I'll see you next time right here on the Good News Program.
I appreciate your interest in my songs and music. If you would like more information concerning my music or preaching CDs, you can write and request a product list. Send all correspondence to Mike Vaughn Ministries, Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466, or email us at mvmgoodnews at aol.com, and our website is mvmgoodnews.com. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. We hope you have been blessed and encouraged. Remember, this program is brought to you by our friends and partners. Pray and ask God what you can do to help us spread the good news. Singing the blues.